Oh God, it is eight in the morning. I am recording this early so that I have time to do shit I need to do for classes. Uh, I have to deal with a lot this morning that I wish I didn't have to deal with. But you know, what are you gonna do? It's uh -huh. Hey everyone, does anyone else want to go to Avengers Campus? Like, go out to California, see all your favorite knockoff Avengers, try all the awesome food, go on the new Spider-Man ride and buy those awesome web shooters. No, not those. These ones. The cool chromed out, displayable web shooters. And you can actually wear them for your, like, your Spider-Man cosplays. Yeah, I do too. However, I don't live in California and I don't have the money to just take a trip to Disneyland and buy those, like, what are they, $100 web shooters? But what I do have is a 3D printer. Yes, that's right. Today, I'm going to be showing you how you can make your own Disneyland Avengers Campus Spider-Man web shooters. Wow, that was a long title. I really just forgot to change into my Spider-Man shirt and I already recorded uh, the intro. Oh well, I'll just deal with this. Before we get started, I just wanna make sure you guys know I'm going for the uh, Avengers Campus Spider-Man web shooter look slash the from the What If episode. If you guys like the more chromed look of these Spider-Man web shooters, don't worry, I'll get into how you guys can do that. But for me, for these web shooters I'm using, I'm just going for simple uh, silver base. So let's get into how to make these web shooters. First, we need a 3D file to be able to print these web shooters. I used Andre Blend's file. You can find these web shooters on his Etsy shop. They're really accurate and they come with the web shooter front, back uh, web trigger, and the back plate thing. After I purchased them, I loaded them into Cura and scaled them to my wrist size. Though something weird happened when I loaded them into Cura, for some reason the web shooters were scaled up to like 10,000% and they were just really huge, but then when I tried to scale them back down to 100%, they turned out really tiny. So I don't know if that's just something wrong with my program or that's just something he did for some reason, I don't know. but. Basically what I did was it took a lot of trial and error and I eventually got down to my wrist size. I had to set it in at 4500 on Cura, the scaling, and I have really tiny wrists. So, you know, just go off of that. I, I'll put on screen what my like wrist size is and you can just go off of that in your scaling. Once that was done, I downloaded the files onto an SD card and inserted the card into my printer and started printing. It took a total of 18 hours to print both uh, the front and back of the web shooter. I chose not to print the trigger and the back plate just because uh, I wanted those plates to be flexible and I'm not really adverse in 3D printing. Adverse, is that the right term? I'm not really that advanced in 3D printing. I don't know uh, really how to use TPU, which is a flexible kind of uh, filament for 3D printing. But if you guys know how to use TPU, go ahead and print those out uh, but i have another way of doing it that's not as good but it fits my needs for it after all the 3d printing was done it was time to prep the pieces which means i did a lot of sanding so much so i got like a blister on my pointer finger so much sanding i printed out the pieces in standard quality which meant i had to do a lot of sanding in order for me to get it as smooth as possible i started with 600 grit sandpaper because that's like the lowest grit sandpaper from this little package thing I got from Amazon of sandpaper. After I got the initial sanding done, I moved on to 800 grit, which is a finer grit. I don't know what I'm talking about. After so many hours of sanding, aka around like two hours of sanding, it was time to use filler primer. Now make sure if you're following this tutorial to get the filler primer that says it's sandable too. I didn't do that, so yeah. I primed the pieces with the filler primer, which basically means I filled in the gaps, the little tiny gaps that I couldn't get with the sandpaper. Then I sanded the excess filler primer off with the 800 grit sandpaper. And then in this shot, you can see uh, where the filler primer, well, filled. And then for the final sanding, I just used 1000 grit sandpaper is that the right sandpaper? I don't know. I, I, I just used it. It's like from my knowledge of sanding prints, I know you 
the finer your go, smoother it'll be, but you need to start out rougher. That's all I know. That's all I learned from Frankly Built's YouTube channel. And real quick, let's just take a look of how much sandpaper I had to use to get the filler primer off. This is why you use sandable filler primer. You don't want gunked up sandpaper. This is a prime example of why you do as I say, not as I do. That'll happen a lot in future tutorials. After that, I used Rust-Oleum Flat Black. I'd actually recommend using uh, the shiny black. I basically just kind of use this as a primer for the metallic silver. And then after painting it black uh, is where I most of the time f up painting. Specifically painting with metallic colors. Make sure you do multiple coats, at least two. I did one and you can clearly see where I missed some spots on the web shooter. So if you're gonna do this way, do multiple coats. Don't do just one. That was where I f***ed up. So yeah, I painted it silver and then I let it dry overnight to just make sure that the paint cured all the way because sometimes, you know, the paint doesn't cure all the way and you get little fingerprints in the paint, which I hate. So I let it cure overnight and after I did that, I used a fine tipped black acrylic marker. You can buy these acrylic markers on Amazon. Make sure it's fine tipped if you're gonna be doing this. And I use that to add all the little detailed lines that you see on the print. And after doing those details, I realized I didn't really like the look of it. <laughs> like, it looks nice on the back, but on the front, it, it just it just doesn't really work. So just kind of take a mental note that it'll look like this when you're done with it. If you don't really like the look, just kind of skip it. Just leave it silver. It looks way better just silver, but if you like it, then you can go ahead and do what I did. And then once all the detailing was done, I sprayed everything with a clear coat just so it can get a nice finish and it also protects the paint. And just like that, the painting was done. Now you may actually want the web shooters to be reflective like the Disneyland versions. And you know, this tutorial doesn't really follow that, but I do know how you can make the web shooters be really reflective chrome. You can buy this paint online and it's supposed to be the world's most reflective, miriest, chrome paint. You can apply it with a brush or with an airbrush. However, you're gonna be spending a lot of money. I'm pretty sure it costs like 40 something dollars and it comes in a really tiny bottle. But the paint is apparently amazing. It's well worth the price and it has amazing, um, what do you call it? Finish? No, not finish. It apparently has amazing coverage. I think it's like 11 milliliters or something and it can cover eight squared feet so if you do buy this you will most likely be able to finish uh, these web shooters with that paint so you know you can go ahead and do that method i just chose not to because again i don't have all that money to spend we're almost finished with these web shooters but first we have to do the web trigger and the back plate i made a simple template using just some masking tape and I cut them out of craft foam. Using contact cement, I glued the uh, foam attachments to the actual web shooters, and they look pretty decent. It's definitely not the best work I've done, but it's also not the worst. It's just supposed to be there. You know, people aren't gonna be looking at the web trigger or the back plate so much as they are the actual, like, web shooter. So, you know, it completely works for me. If it doesn't work for you, you don't have to do this method, but I just chose to. Finally, we're gonna be looking at the strapping system. For the strapping system, I decided to use spandex and Velcro. I found for strapping systems on web shooters that spandex works really well. You can totally use elastic bands, but what I found with elastic bands is that they don't really have a nice pull to them and it feels like they're gonna break on you, like just tear apart from the actual web shooter. Spandex, not so much. It has an easier time uh, pulling back and, you know, letting go. So, yeah. I decided to use uh, spandex. I cut like four small pieces out of scrap spandex I, I was using. And then I made sure to have one pair longer than the other for the Velcro. I used contact cement again to glue the smaller piece of spandex to the front and back of the web shooter. Then I glued on the Velcro to the spandex strap and the inside of the front of the web shooter and then make sure to line it up and you know just glued the strap to the back of the web shooter. I let it dry for the day uh, just because I didn't want the glue to all of a sudden 
come off when I was wearing it. So I let it dry, you know, let it settle. And now I have my own Avengers Campus Spider-Man web shooters. And, you know, they actually fit my wrist and don't look ridiculously huge. And, you know, they can be for any Spider-Man cosplay I want. So that's pretty amazing. Did I make these as perfect as I could have? No. Did I make these as nicely as the Disneyland web shooters you can buy? No. But I made them to my liking and what I needed them for, and now you can too. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Make sure to stay tuned to next week where I will be using these web shooters for my Zombie Hunter Spider-Man cosplay from the Zombies episode of What If. Hopefully that video will still happen. I'm not 100% sure after this morning. But till then, I will see you guys in the next video.